many, many years in the financial world. I've been in this community for over 50 years, and I'm still here. Um, I policed this community for 25 years of my life. I lived in the same house uh, where, I, where I am, I grew up at. Um, so we've been here for 50 years. This is nothing new for me. Uh, my mom and dad were here in the same community where, where they had a junkyard when I was able to take possession of it, I, I turned it into what I turned it into. And so I, I listened to uh, Caesar. I'm not really a social media type of guy. All I do is I like to cook and uh, do what I do. Uh, but he had made some, some allegations about how he made my son uh, because when Jeff Jr. met him, uh, we were losing uh, these very same businesses that we've built from back in the early 80s. That is a poor excuse of, of, of coverage for him to say this because I would like for him to show me in white and writing or in black and white where you saved uh, these properties from uh, my son and I. Um, that is so untrue. But I would like to see this. And then when we go to court, Tony, trust me, uh, I will not stop until Whatever's owed to those children of my son, they get what's, what's coming to them. And my, I salute you uh, as well, my brother, for even standing up with all of the criticism that you have had gotten in the beginning of this story. You know, I watched a little bit. I didn't come out up front because I was just waiting for the day to come where I had to see Caesar in court. But because of the love, that Jeff Jr. had from friends uh, out there, they would not let it rest. And they made it known that I was his father and he needed to be talked about. So excuse me if I may get a little emotional at times when I talk about my son because it's just like it happened yesterday. Although it's six months ago, I miss him dearly. So Caesar is really playing with fire at this moment and I'm glad that the authorities picked him up because that is a good thing uh, for him uh, and his associates I've been here for 50 years and I'm going to stay here until God takes me home I'm going to fight for my child until the end until there's no longer a fight for me so I appreciate you, man, taking this time to use your platform to acknowledge my son and also acknowledge me uh, for the work that we've done. We don't ask for much. We always try and give. This is what was raised by my mother and father who started this journey, who started this legacy. Uh, it was those two. And I took it to the level, to the point where I could take it and turn the torch on to Jeff Jr., and he carried it very, very well, I must say. I must say that he carried it very well. Even if Caesar wanted to get away with this, the people, the people of this city would not allow this to happen because of the love and the respect that they had for this young man and not only myself. But it's been really, really, really difficult just seeing how disrespectful of this young man has been to the community, to these people that he's taken their money and he thinks is a joke. But at the end of the day, God has his last say, my man. He will deal with it. He will deal with all of those that try and come before this, 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 this journey that we're trying to bring out to the people. This isn't about street or not street. You understand? People are talking about someone being snitches, bro. This is where this is right or wrong. This has nothing to do with you or anyone else being a snitch to anyone. This is right or wrong. There's the only it's black and white, my man. That's all this is. So for those that want to criticize you and talk about you being a snitch, they need to go somewhere and sit down and get a real life for themselves. But you know what, Tom? This journey will continue. You know, I'm just thankful for the, the love from the people and from yourself. I didn't I never met you until 
Sunday, you sent me this message and say, hey, I've heard a story. I need to talk to you. Are you willing to talk? And I say, yes. We've been talking. And I admire you, my man. I admire you. Not only will I come meet you in person, because I don't really do the social media much often, other than cook food and put displays and stuff of the food business and the car wash on social media. But I physically want to come to you and give you a hug and show you that much respect that I appreciate what you're doing for these people. Not only for my son, but for these people that are hurting behind all of this stealing and carrying on. My son got out here and worked every day of his life. I taught him that. I was a single father for five, since he was five years old. The courts gave me custody of this young man because they knew that he would be better off with me and no one else. So, so whatever stories that you may hear, I, I raised him up until the day he died. He was 33 years old, but I guided him up until the point he did die. So Jeff has lived a, a great life, man. And I cannot allow Caesar and DJ Envy or any other person take advantage of that good heart that he had. I, I will die first before I allow that to happen. And I will make sure of that. And I appreciate you, man. I really can't continue to talk as much as I go on. It hurts. It hurts more and more and more. This is... This is not easy for me. This is not easy for me. You know, my son was my world, although I have three other kids, but my son was my shadow. He was my shadow from the day he was born. So this is not about the money. It's about the respect that he deserves. And I, I can't wait to challenge Caesar Anytime, any place, he want to face me, face man to man. We, I am here for it. And anyone else that may come against or have something to deal, say to me about my son. I am here for it, bro. Until God take me home, I'm here. Let's not forget it. <clears throat> man, every time I talk to you, you got me in tears, bro. Damn. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am so sorry. Man, but man, 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 get on the emotional. Phone. These are emotional <laughs> moments for me, Tom. Sheesh. I'm sorry, brother. You gotta apologize. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, let me get some. I gotta get some, some tissue for myself. I I want to tell you that uh, you you know we we've already had the conversation offline, but I'll say it publicly, I admire what you stand for as a father. You know. A lot of black men and women that don't grow up with with, with what you were representing, and uh, I told you, told you every time I get off the phone with you, I immediately call my boys. Yeah, give them that love, man. Every day is not promised to us. Give them that hug on a daily basis. Tell them you love them. See, Jeff was here with me. He was here with me every day, even though he was a grown man. There was not a day that go by unless one of us was on vacation that we didn't see each other or we didn't call each other. You know, my son, I was a hard person. And, you know, I was very, very hard with my son. And I think that's what made him who he was, you know. But uh, I must say, oh, before Jeff died, he said something to me, uh, Tony, that made all the world for me. That's what keeps me going. Uh, and he said to me, he said, hey, Dad, I never said this to you because he was having some issues with some other financial people that was trying to be slick with him with the automobile. And he took me, of course. He would always come to get me for the bad news because he knew Dad would come to his rescue and to back him and support him, just as my dad did for me. So... We did. We went to this particular place, and we, we handled what we had to handle. And just before we left, we were getting to pull off. He put the car in drive to pull off, and he stopped the car for a moment. He says, I said, what's, what's wrong? He said, let me, I want to say something to you. 
It had already been a year and a half. My mother and father had passed. And he said to me, he said, you know, Dad, this is why my grandma would always tell me to include you in everything that I do. Because for, for one thing, you sure to know that your dad would always have your best interests at heart. Okay? So this situation with Caesar, I'm proud of my son for the decisions that he made. He thought his money was safe. He trusted these people to do the right thing. Okay? But not all, not everybody thinks that way, like he did, like he was raised. Okay? He, that boy would give you the shirt off his back, just like his dad would. Okay? When he said that to me, it did something to me. It opened up my heart to know that all of the hard work because it's, it made him who he was. When they had that candle lighting for my son, my young son, I had no clue that many people was gonna come here on this two corners of this street. It was probably over 10,000 people here. You could not get in here. So at that moment, I knew that he touched so many people's hearts whether they were white, black, green, or purple. It didn't matter what race you was. It was. That's the way he was raised. That's the way I was raised. It don't matter what race you are, who you are, or what you are. You could be misfortune. You don't have what I have, but guess what? You're equal to me. I'm no different than you. There are people that come here. There are people that walk these streets every day that ask for money if they come past my truck, bro. And they say, I said, I don't have have any money for you, but you hungry? They say, yeah, I feed them. Not only here in Patterson, New Jersey, but you ask that community in New York City where I cook at. This is what God does for me. As long as I bless others, God will continue to bless me. Why he put me in this position, I have no clue. Why he took my mother first, I have no clue. Why he took my father first, I have no clue. Why he took little Jeff next, I have no clue. I'm still here. I will not curse him. I have to trust and believe that there's something bigger than, to this story than this, than that. You know, Tone? I'm here, man. <clears throat> you gained a family member, my brother. Although I'm on the other side of the country, you gained a family member. Anything that you need, if I can do it, I don't have much, but I can, I'll give you what I have or what my support, what I can. Okay? I just need those fries. <laughs> I need no <laughs> fries. I, I told you what I want. <laughs> Thanks fries. for making me laugh. Y'all got to see these seafood fries you got. It's Thank crazy. You, I got to gotta get them. That's what I need. Yeah. Tone, I thank you, man. I thank you for, you know, bringing bringing some light to this uh, situation. You're awesome. You're awesome, and uh, it takes a lot. It takes a, somebody very strong to to take that position, uh, to get in front of this, uh, to talk about it when people thought that you were hating on the other man, or you were trying to belittle someone, or to try and get recognition for yourself. Uh, but yet and still, it all came out to the opening. Uh, the truth has came came out. Still more to come. This is just the beginning. This is all, all that this is, is the beginning of a long road. Um, so just get ready. Just get ready. Uh, and I'm ready. Uh, I can't wait to see where this goes. I really appreciate you. Uh, you know, man. For the people that don't know, I, I talk to I, we probably talk every day. Um, since since we since we met, we damn near talk every day, and um, I admire what you stand for. Um, I think one of the things that you know, hearing your story from just being a father that wanted to be involved and do his best for his family, and not only his family, but you also poured that into the community. Um, you know. I, I just, 
just think that we got to get to a place where we have to start standing up for each other. And yeah. I, 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 I've been through my own situations where I got scammed and taken advantage of, and I, I raised hell, and nobody said anything. They just made me the bad guy. I know the feeling when you're like trying to get justice, and you know it's like you're fighting against everything. So I was, you know, I know I'm big enough in this in this space where people will listen to me. Yeah. It came to me, and I just felt like it was my my duty to speak up. Uh, this has been probably one of the most challenging things I've ever dealt with, uh, not only from just de dealing with all the different people and the different stories that are all just heartbreaking. Uh, I, I speak to a lot of victims that, that have went through something with these guys, but then you take on the personal attacks and the slander. My family also <clears throat> takes on personal attacks and slander. Uh, the stress that it puts on all the people around me to, you know, to try to be a person that stands up and gives yeah. you gives the, 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 the voice for the people because this took me six months of getting disrespected and I still get disrespected. I'm still getting death threats. I'm still getting violated. Uh, as, as this thing has come to the light, uh, my job and duty, I felt like what would I have wanted somebody to do for me? Yeah. And that was just that. Yeah. I said, I'm going to do what was right. Yeah. I had, I had those feelings, man. I yeah. know what y'all feel. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? It's been it's been um very a very challenging uh, time. You know, uh, not only uh, you know all of my son's affairs has been obstacles since he left. Not just this one, there's multiple uh situations from the day he passed away his these obstacles started for me. Uh, privately that no one knows. Some know the situation I had to do just to bury my son uh, with those uh, trying to grab and hold on to things. Uh, so I understand what you're saying. Um, truly understand. But you know what, Tone? God has your back, bruh. Okay? Those threats and things that people are saying stand no ground. Because when you do right by people, no matter what, the evil come against you, God gonna protect you. I believe it. I trust and believe in that. I'm a very, very spiritual individual when it comes to that. I was raised by two pastors. And although sometimes we all have doubt because we're human, but guess what? Uh, you have to still go back to what the Bible says. You have to trust and believe and have faith. And that's what has been giving me this peace that I have, you know. I don't know if you saw the incident where I was here where I was struggling very much day by day with the pain and anger. But you know what? God sent something. He sent a message for me to say, hey, you're going to be all right. Continue, continue this journey, my son. He left me behind for a reason, because I've, I've always prepared Jeff Jr. for me to leave first, okay? It's what we do for our children. We put things in perspective for our children, okay? And this is what Jeff Jr. was doing for his children, his daughter and his son, okay? So he's no longer here, so it's my duty to do what he would have done because this is how I taught him to do when I left. If I left before you, son, this is what you do. This is what I left you to do. This is what I need you to do. This is what's this. Do this. Do that. Okay? So trust and believe God has your back in all that you do. If you're doing it for all the right causes, you can best to believe that God will protect and cover you. Although they may come against you, you'll be fine. And believe it. I I talked to my dad like a, a month ago, and and um, you know we had a conversation where he was kind of like, "Hey man, you got everything in the world, like you got every, everything in the world, and these people are making threats, and I can't sleep at night. I'm having dreams of you getting killed and me being at your your funeral." And he's like, "Tony, I don't want to be." He said, "You 
them people, man, they somebody else needs to do it. He said somebody else needs to do it. And, they, and, and, and he was thinking like a father. Yeah. Right? Because he loves you. And I told him, I said, Dad, I, I love you and I, I understand how you feel. But the only thing I will consider is if I was in the wrong and I wasn't doing what's right. I said, I will never second guess doing what's right. I will never think that taking care of my fellow man or woman will be where I would have to have to have the fear of my life or doing what's right or wrong. I will do what's right. And, uh, you know, regardless of what people may think of getting, you know, personal gain or, or whatever, if you know me for any second, anybody that ever know has known me, they know how I operate, how I roll. They know how I stand. I stand for what's right. Since I was a little boy, I'm a buck the system if it's wrong. I don't care. And if I once I, I know I'm right, I'm bullheaded, and I don't care what you say to me. I'm not going to shake. And you know, I, I've done six months worth of research. Um, I'm prepared to be right there, front row, pointing to make sure that all the families get justice. When I hear your voice, when I hear all the other uh, hundreds of people that are going through the same exact experience where they're going through trauma, heartbreak, uh, financial uh, distress, based off the trust yeah. of being coached by Caesar and Envy. Yeah. And there should be accountability for that. The fact that these guys Nobody is taking this shit seriously. Nobody is respecting it as if it's their own money. And the problem with a lot of people is they don't consider it because it's not their personal money. But then when it impacts them, that's when they want to care. Yeah. This thing right now is a major situation. We're talking a hundred plus million dollars. And not only that, you're talking about from good people, just like Jeff and Jeff Jr. Yeah. That were doing great, great things in their life. See, I think the story has been misled where a lot of people are thinking that it was ignorant people that were just putting money out without any due diligence and they didn't know anything. But a lot of people went into business that were business people that had business acumen, that were very intelligent, that had contracts in place and believed in Caesar that he was going to do what he said he was going to do. See, the narrative where I hear like DJ academics and all these people spreading things that are completely disrespectful to like people that went through and did due diligence. See, one thing about it, no matter if somebody was licensed, if they did their due diligence, if you're dealing with a criminal, they're going to do criminal shit. So you can have, have every contract in place. You can do everything that you do. You can to cross your T's and dot your I's. But these guys weren't upright standing citizens. They were criminals. They were criminals since 2017. I think it's very hard for me to ever believe that DJ Envy can tell me that somebody that has been a, a fraud for over six years, you never knew that something was wrong. See, and then the further, the further that point, you had business partners that came out and told you that they had issues with him, that he was doing bad business by them. And what did you do? You, you still continue to promote this yeah. guy. You still push people in, in, in front of him. You just shoved them into people's mouths. You made it go harder and harder and harder towards the audience. It wasn't like you found out that there was a red flag and you need to back off. You decided to push and promote him more and more and make more money and make more victims. Yeah. See, whether the, the FBI uh, arrests you, I will forever make sure that you're held accountable for the lack of negligence that you had to continuously promote somebody that was doing fucking fraud business because you knew your building wasn't even complete. Mm. You knew your, if you had bad business with them, how could you go out here and continue to promote them? See, mm. at some point, you got to understand that there had to be greed attached. Oh, yeah. Because it's something that tells you, like, hey, you're looking at six years. You're saying that you got 3,000 plus properties. Where are the properties at? See, I've done my research. See, the first time I talked to you, MB, I didn't have any research done. I have a whole paper trail now of all the different LLCs and when properties were going into foreclosure, you mm -hmm. guys were transferring back into Jennifer's name. I got properties that you guys were purchasing, and then you would let them uh, get mysteriously burnt to the ground. I got I got tenants reaching out to me that said that they look like the, you guys aren't even, like, they don't even know who the real owners are. See, I'm hearing a whole bunch of different stuff. I'm hearing a whole bunch of different stuff. And I want to understand, like, if you're a legitimate business person, how could this be going on underneath your nose for six years when you share the same office with this guy? 
Why were you watching drug dealers walk into the building and, and be okay with them giving Caesar money? Mm. You knew it was bad that you would be responsible for it. You sat there in the office. People brought cash money into that building. You were in the building. You know how I know you were in the building? Nigga, they told me and you got pictures with them. You were mm. hands. So you're sitting in the building with somebody that's taking drugs. You you know who's a legitimate bu business person and who's a street nigga when they walk in your business. You letting niggas off the streets walk in your office that you share with your business partner and give hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash. See, you can talk about that bullshit victim shit to the people online, but you full of shit, nigga. And you disgust them. Because these people are hurting because of your negligence. You're, you're disgusting. See, I listened to you talk about how you stole back in the 90s. I listened to how they you talked about going to church, dressing up like you were going to church on a Sunday, walking in the Sam's Club with a church uniform on, an outfit, a costume, so you could steal thousands in electronics. And the interesting pieces your wife was doing it too both of you and your wife